Hey everyone, we've got another heart today. This is number 70 in our collection, and the heart would have sat roughly in the chest length. This, with the anterior surface towards the screen, posterior surface towards the turntable, superior head here, inferior legs down here, left over here, right over here. So let's start off as we usually do, which is by trying to identify at least externally what appears to be the right atrial appendage. And here we find what appears to be the right atrial appendage, at least externally. It's triangular in shape, broad-based or pyramidal in shape. So let's go ahead and open up the heart there. And when we do that, we do find the right atrium. And we know this is a right atrium because there's pectinate muscles that spill outside the confines of the appendage. And so when we look at this right atrium, we find the the oval fossa here, with perhaps a small intraatrial communication here at the superior aspect of the oval fossa. Here we found the mouth of the coronary sinus. And then right below it, we find that there is in fact an atrioventricular septal defect. What people will often call the primum atrial septum, septal defect, but truly better referred to as an atrioventricular septal defect as it is, in fact, uh, spanning both the atria and the ventricles. Now, when we try to find the triangle of cock here, we find that it isn't actually a structure that exists in this heart. Remember that the triangle of cock is usually bounded by the mouth of the coronary sinus, the tendon of totara, which is here, and then the right-sided atrioventricular valve. And if you were to make that triangle, it would be here. And at its apex is where we would expect to find the atrioventricular node. And if the atrioventricular node were to live here, then of course, there would be no way for the penetrating bundles to actually make it across this defect here. And so in fact, in hearts with an atrioventricular septal defect, there's the triangle of Thien and Anderson. And that is usually going to tell us where the atrioventricular node in these hearts with atrioventricular septal defect are, and we would expect the AV node to be inferior displaced and be approximately here. So here is the atrial component of the atrioventricular septal defect, and now we can start seeing the valve leaflets themselves. And here we find the superior bridging leaflet. Here's the right-sided component. Here's the left-sided component. Here's the inferior bridging leaflet here. And we do see that, in fact, there is a connecting tongue of tissue. So there are, in fact, two orifices to this common atrioventricular valve. And here's that tongue of tissue connecting the superior and the inferior bridging leaflet. So once again, here's the superior bridging leaflet. Here's the inferior bridging leaflet, and here is this tong of connecting tissue right here. Now, when we look at this superior bridging leaflet, we can see its right-sided component here and the left-sided component here, and we can see very nicely here is the here is the crest of the ventricular septum, and there are in fact connections of the superior bridging leaflet directly to the crest of the septum here, consistent with what we would call or refer to as a Rastelli type A. So once again, here is the ventricular septum where my probe is. Here's the crest of the septum. And you can see that there are direct connections between the superior bridging leaflet and the crest of the ventricular septum consistent with the Rastelli type A, okay? And here's the inferior bridging leaflet that also courses over the crest of the ventricular septum and has direct connections to it as well. Now, when we go ahead and take a look at this ventricle, we do find that it has coarse trabeculations consistent with the morphologic right ventricle, and that there, in fact, is a septomarginal trabeculation also consistent with a morphologic right ventricle. And once again, here is that superior bridging leaflet. Here's the right-sided component. Here is the crest of the ventricular septum once again, and we can see that there are direct connections of the superior bridging leaflet to the crest of the ventricular septum from here as well. 
When we get into the right ventricular outflow tract, we do find an arterial valve. This has three leaflets, one, two, three, with three sinuses, one, two, and three. This valve is completely supported by muscle, and there are no coronaries from rising from its sinuses consistent with a morphologic pulmonary valve. And it's important to, to remember with the arterial valves or the semilunar valves that the annulus that we create by echo or clinically use is a man-made construct. There is no true round or oval annulus to the arterial valves, unlike the uh, atrioventricular valves, because the true annulus of the arterial valves is actually this crown shape here. And you can see that, in fact, these are the fibrous leaflets. And then interposed in between them are these triangles of myocardium, which means that the true annulus is actually this semi-lunar or crown-shaped annulus. The pulmonary trunk is here. It's been transected. So why don't we go to the posterior aspect of the heart now? Here's the posterior aspect of the heart. Here is the left atrial appendage, finger-like in short. Let's go ahead and open up the atrium here. Here we find an atrium that is smooth-walled, consistent with a morphologic left atrium. Here's the mouth to the left atrial appendage, and you can see that all the pectinate muscles are going to be confined within that appendage itself. And then once again, now we can appreciate the atrioventricular septal defect, now from the left side. So here's the left component of the superior bridging leaflet as it courses through. Here is the ventricular septum. Once again, you can see that there are direct connections of the superior bridging leaflet to the crest of the ventricular septum here. Once again, consistent with what we would call a Rostelli type A. Here's the inferior bridging leaflet coursing over the crest of the ventricular septum, also with direct connections to it. And from this heart, we can see that there, in fact, is mostly an atrial level shunt in this heart. So an atrioventricular septal defect with a tongue of tissue sep connecting the superior and inferior bridging leaflets leading to two orifices of the common atrioventricular junction with largely an atrial level shunt. Then when we look at this ventricle here, we find fine crisscross trabeculations consistent with the morphologic left ventricle. And then when we look at the, the left ventricular outflow tract, we find that the inlet component of the left ventricle is in fact much shorter than the outlet component of the left ventricle. Once again, here is the inlet component of the left ventricle. And here's the outlet component, and you can see there's a large discrepancy in the, in the length of the inlet and the outlet components, which is what we often find in the atrioventricular septal defect. And this is because the aorta generally sits wedged in between the tricuspid and the mitral valves, but in the setting of atrioventricular septal defect, there aren't two atrioventricular valves, so the aorta cannot be wedged between them, and in fact is sprung forward and sits anterior to the common atrioventricular junction. This leads to the, the unequal inlet and outlet components of the left ventricle and leads to the alleged or so-called gooseneck deformity that we, we appreciate by echo. We also see kind of the scooped out appearance of the ventricular septum here, also consistent with the atrioventricular septal defect. And then as we look into the left ventricular alpha tract, we find another arterial valve with three leaflets. One, two, three, and here's this leaflet transected. Three distinct sinuses. We can see a coronary arising from one of these sinuses. And we find that this arterial valve does have fibrous continuity with the left side of the common atrioventricular valve. This is all consistent with an aortic valve. And here's the aorta itself. Here's the ascending aorta. Here's some head and neck vessels. And here's the transverse aorta here. And the remainder of the aorta has been transected. So here we've got 
a heart with an atrioventricular septal defect. There is a tongue of tissue connecting the superior and the inferior bridging leaflet. And the inferior bridging leaflet has direct connections to the crest of the ventricular septum here, all consistent with a Rostelli uh, type A atrioventricular septal defect. And this atrioventricular septal defect has a, a largely atrial level shunt.